Hello, my name is Patrick Boo. I'm the Portfolio Manager for Cybersecurity Services. And I'm Joe Catanese. I'm a Cybersecurity Practice Lead with ABB. And we're going to talk about uh, Cybersecurity Services and our portfolio overview and how we believe our portfolio can help our customers secure their systems. Um, agenda, very quickly, we start with an introduction, why we think the way we do, what the justifications are, uh, our approach to securing an industrial system, and we're going to spend a little bit of time on examples to put this into practice. First, we have key risk factors. This is why an industrial customer of ours need to concern himself about cyber. We have very, very capable DCS systems that can do phenomenal things. They're very distributed, albeit complex, coupled with the fact that we have a shortage of cybersecurity experts. That leads to a very lucrative target. With that, our customers are very concerned with the potential impacts such as health and safety and even loss of revenue. Now, looking at our cybersecurity landscape, we can see that there is a dramatic escalation of attacks and impacts. If we look in 2010, uh, that was the milestone case of Stuxnet. Uh, since then, that past decade, uh, there have been a few major attacks, a few major impacts uh, over the course of the years. Looking now at 2020 and 2021, there have been a major increase of attacks and, and compromises. Yeah, and, and many of them have been um, ransomware, hasn't it? Right, uh, this, this new era is the rise of ransomware attacks, but we can't forget that there's also other uh, attacks going on as well, such as the, the, the novel supply chain attacks that we're seeing uh, and compromises in uh, water and wastewater. Uh, so again, to underline that point, there's just been a dramatic increase over the past uh, several years in, in the frequency. But you can still do things about this. And the U.S. Department of Homeland Security says that 98% of the cases where they've been involved, cyber cases, could have been avoided with fairly foundational controls. Similarly, from the Center of Internet Security, albeit the IT side, saying that implementing 20 different controls could lower it by 85%. So there is much you can do. Yeah, going even further than that, there's uh, global standards and regulations that uh, are looking into these basic controls. So for example, you have uh, ISO 27001 and IEC 62443, which are uh, international standards, which cover a lot of these basic controls. Um, and the bottom line is you can really go far with just implementing these basic controls and, and covering a lot of your risk. Okay, so let's look at what we recommend and the path we're getting there. So we start here with, with four different types of threats, um, non-targeted threats, virus, uh, mistakes, and so forth, hobbies, professional hackers, and nation states. How do we protect against these? And we have to start, of course, with the non-targeted threats. Right, the first thing that we look at are basic cybersecurity controls. These are things like security patches, malware protection, backup and recovery, some of the basic foundational controls that will cover a lot of these non-targeted attacks. So with very simple means, you, you can do quite a bit. That's right. All right. Uh, moving forward, we need a little bit more protection. We want to take it one step further. What do we do? All right, the next thing you need to do is you need to, you need to apply maintenance. Uh, you need to maintain your controls, you need to maintain your system, and keep everything up to date. And that gets us into the hobbyist hackers, and I would say covers most of our customers' needs, but it may not be enough for, for a handful of them. And how do we move towards um, in further into this? So we move a little bit further into this uh, roadmap with training. Uh, you want to make sure that you're training from your entire organization, from awareness training, down to your individual teams who are using the cybersecurity controls. Yeah, and I, I would say that this is what we recommend as a basis or foundation for, for all our customers because it reduces the risk considerably. Still, professional hackers, they're out there. We've seen them, we showed them previously. What do we do against them? Here, we're gonna apply a little bit of consulting efforts. So we're talking about higher level controls uh, and um, custom implementation, things like application allow listing or network monitoring or network anomaly detection. Um, this is gonna help uh, guard against some of these higher level attacks. Yeah, and, and the last piece, 
there's really no controls you can apply there. You have to monitor to find these um, advanced persistent thre threats that are out there. And we do that with operations. Right, this is exactly as you say, with our 24 seven monitoring, looking for threats both inside and outside the organization, uh, where the best course of action is to respond upon detection. Yeah, doing this, your risk drops dramatically when we go from, from controls uh, over to the more advanced uh, security measures. But it's one thing we often miss, and that's the architecture. To having a very strong architecture as a foundation can actually lower the risk overall across all, all of this. So by doing that part, you actually increase your security quite a bit. And Joe and I did a previous video with this, or a series of videos, so please uh, look at them and, and learn more about our reference architecture. Okay, let's look at a few examples now to put this into a more realistic scenario. Something we see quite often is a customer that haven't focused on cyber in the past, they may or may not have done something, and they just wonder where do they start? They come to a realization we should do something. Where do they start? Right, and this, like you said, is a very common uh, scenario uh, where a customer is just beginning their cybersecurity journey. So the first thing I'm going to ask them is, are you patching and are you taking backups? Now, if the answer is yes, then I'm gonna go ahead and suggest an assessment. And that way we can take a look at where the system stands uh, and what things need to be do and prioritize uh, the continuation of their system. Just find the weaknesses. Correct. Mm -hmm. If the answer is no and they're not, or they're not sure, then I'm gonna go ahead and immediately suggest uh, patching and doing backups. Mm -hmm. uh, and the reason being is if I did an assessment, that's gonna be the number one outcome anyway, because it's going to be the, the main thing that you wanna get started with with your cybersecurity journey. So we just go directly to the, to the security control in that case. All right, and in our risk uh, reduction roadmap, this is the first step, it is in the beginning. Apply the controls, reduce your risk that, that first rather major step. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, the next example is also more common than one think, air gaps. Um, the idea that you can disconnect your DCS system and use that as a cybersecurity control, we all know that is not true. Uh, but still, and in this case is a good thing, the, the customer realized that it's not sustainable any longer. What do we um, recommend then? Yeah, so the fact of the matter is systems are becoming more and more interconnected every day. Uh, and we, there's various reasons why air gaps are, are no longer viable. Even the Wall Street Journal had a blog about it back in 2014. Uh, so the first thing that we're going to recommend doing is uh, consulting our reference architecture. We mentioned it previously, but we have a, a strong recommendation and guide, a set of drawings and a, and a document that is a companion document to it. Uh, that goes through what ABB sees as its most secure implementation of our systems in terms of in terms of architecture. So, so connecting your system is not lowering, making it more risky than the air gap. Correct. So, the next thing we would recommend is performing a gap assessment. Now, this is looking at your current architecture, and then looking at where you want to go within the reference architecture and prioritizing the items that you need to do to get there, both in what's the risk cost benefit and what do we want to work on next. All right, so we're implementing the uh, reference architecture. We're just figuring out exactly how to do it the right way right. and to not miss anything. Okay, so another example would be a more mature customer. They implemented cybersecurity. They have things in order. They got a way on their journey but they're still now concerned about all these new threats. They're seeing that they need to do more and they are reading about the ransomwares. What do we recommend for them? Right. The first thing that I'm going to recommend to this customer is to maintain your cybersecurity controls. Similar to your industrial control system, your cybersecurity controls need maintenance uh, to make sure that they are patching their vulnerabilities and keeping them up to date. The next thing I'm going to recommend is make sure you're training your teams anywhere from awareness training to the whole organization, 
down to specific cybersecurity training for those in charge of the controls. Absolutely, that would give you a reasonable protection, I would say. You don't click on emails, you don't do the bad things. Uh, what if that is not, not enough? What is the next thing you can do if you want to take it up one notch? The next step would be to consider application allow listing. Now, this is a very powerful cybersecurity control and it's been proven to, to really reduce the, the risk of malicious software running in a stable environment such as industrial control systems. But it's not without um, some things to consider, right? Correct. Uh, this is the reason I suggest training first because there's a very steep learning curve when in introducing application allow listing as it's a very powerful control. So, so this customer will now coming in well into hobbyist hackers if, if not further. Correct. The last example that we, we have, a little bit different maybe, but we see it a lot. A manager or someone in a leadership position comes back after a conference or something and saying, we need to implement this new technology, maybe network monitoring. The people they're gonna install it may not know what they're doing and turning to us and what would we, how would we guide them and help them? Yeah, there's, there's a lot of great technologies out there and you're gonna see a lot of these at various conferences that you attend. It's wonderful that the amount of uh, innovation and technology that's out there in cybersecurity and, and the rise of cybersecurity as a, as a major topic. The one thing I would recommend is to consult with your OEM. Uh, your OEM is gonna make sure that they're using trusted and proven technologies, uh, proven partners, uh, and they're gonna ensure that the technologies that are being introduced into the control system do not compromise safety or reliability. No, that, that, that's very, very true. And you get into the consulting, you have a, a good level of, of control and security at this point, mm -hmm. if you using it correctly. That's right. To wrap this up, the conclusion here, the threat environment is growing like crazy, right? That's correct. The, the frequency of attacks are on the rise. They're really specifically targeting industrial control systems. We really need to, to recognize that some of the basic controls will really take you a very long way. Yeah, but the good thing, it's not too late. It's not too early. It's, it's a time to start, but I don't think you can wait too much longer because the risks are mounting fast. Exactly. Whether you're at the very beginning of your cybersecurity journey or you're well into it. Um, ABB has a lot of solutions to help you with this journey and continue, continue down that path. Yeah, and we will help our customers to find the right balance, but it's also something customers should think about, the balance between what risk they perceive, what they want to protect, what they can accept and cost, of course. Correct, and again, uh, make sure you discuss this with your OEM, see what proven technologies they have and proven partners they're using, uh, and uh, make sure that those uh, technologies are introduced into your environments in a tested and proven manner. Absolutely. So, uh, at the end, please visit our webpage, abb.com slash cybersecurity. Scroll down a little bit and click on the cybersecurity services link, and you can see uh, all the products that we talked about here or all the components that we talked about here to reduce that risk as we said up to 80 90 percent so thank you very much joe yeah, thank you very much for everyone until next time <laughs>